Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to discuss biology of Viridella parvicella, which is a very common and major pest of sugarcane. This lecture is the first part of the series on pests of sugarcane. Sugarcane is one of the most important crops worldwide. The scientific name of sugarcane is Saccharum officinarum. It belongs to the grass family Gramineae or Poaceae. The plants grow up to 2 to 6 meters and in the internodes of the stem, sucrose is accumulated. This sucrose is extracted for sugar production. Sugarcane is used for 79% of global sugar production. Here is the distribution map of sugarcane. This crop is cultivated in many countries and India is one of the major producers. This map should give you an idea about the importance of sugarcane in agricultural economics. In this series, I will talk about three pests of sugarcane, sugarcane leafhopper, sugarcane top borer and sugarcane stem borer. First, let's start with sugarcane leafhopper, Pyrilla purpusilla. Pyrilla purpusilla is very commonly found in Southeast Asia. Let's talk about the outline of this lecture. Whenever we want to study the biology of any pest, we need to talk about its systematic position or taxonomic status ways in which we can identify it and its distribution, habits, life cycle, the ways it can damage the crop and the control measures that can be taken to uh, keep the damages to a minimum degree. Let's start with systematic position. Sugarcane leafhopper or Pyrilla purpusilla belongs to phylum Arthropoda, subphylum Uniramia, class Insecta, subclass Terigota, division Exopterigota, order Hemiptera, suborder Homoptera, family Falgoridae or Lufopidae, genus Pyrilla, species Pyrilla purpusilla. Here you can see that I have given two names in the family. It was first included under family Falgoridae, but now it is considered under family Lufopidae. Distribution I have already shown you that it is found in Southeast Asia. All over India you can find Pyrilla purpusilla. It can also be found in Pakistan, China, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand and other such countries. How to identify Pyrilla purpusilla? It is a very small insect. Its color is pale tawny yellow and it has small minute black dots all over its four wings. The head is prominently drawn forward and it forms a snout or a rostrum. The wingspan varies from 16 to 18 millimeters for males and 19 to 21 millimeters for females. So females are a little bit larger than the males. The forewings are semi-opaque and yellow-brown in color. The cephalic process, which is this, is about two-fifths of the body length and its dorsal margin is generally parallel to the body that is it is in the same line as the dorsal margin the dorsal the dorsal lateral margin of the ninth segment is provided with a dome shaped elevation in the center which you cannot see in this picture but if you stretch the wings and expose the abdomen then you would see a dome shaped elevation in the center of the ninth segment life cycle any hemipteran insect's life cycle would include these stages, the adult stage, the eggs and the nymphal stage. If we put that scheme into Pyrilla purpusilla's life cycle, then we can see the adult, which we have already discussed. Then we see the eggs here and the nymph. The adult lays the eggs, the female lays the eggs after mating. The eggs hatch into 6 to 15 days. The nymph takes 40 to 60 days to become the adult. Now, let's talk about each stage in detail. The adult I have already talked about, it has a rostrum or a snout. At the end of the rostrum, it would have the piercing and sucking mouth parts with which it sucks the juice from the plants. Its body color is tawny yellow with minute black dots all over the four wings and it can, it is very soft insect. And if you look at its habits, they are found gregariously and jump off readily when disturbed. Gregariously means that they will be found in a group. Adults are active flyers and migrating from one crop to another and breed throughout the year. 
which here uh, signifies that sugarcane is not the only host for Pidella purpusilla. It can also hop to some other uh, crop nearby and it can survive there as well. Okay, let's talk about the eggs. The eggs are light yellowish in color and you will always find them in a cluster. And this cluster will be covered with some hairy material. Okay. And these eggs are laid near the midrib in groups of about 20 eggs or such. Okay. And you would always find these eggs at the lower surface of the leaf. When the eggs hatch, the nymphs come out. The nymphs are initially greenish and they later turn pale brownish and nymphs will always be wingless because they have the wing buds which develop into the full grown wings into the adult. Okay, So the nymphal stage will not have the wings, they will not have the reproductive organs. The adults will have both. So that differentiates the nymphs from the adults. Now here Pyrilla parfusilla's nymphs, they have something very special. They have these two anal filaments which are covered with whitish fluffy waxy material. Now because of these anal filaments which are quite long, they look like a trident. Now these nymphs take about 40 to 60 days to complete its development and the wing pads develop with each mold. So, in the adult, finally, the wings will be fully grown, but in the nymphal stages, wing birds start to develop. Let's talk about how Pyrilla purpusilla can damage sugarcane crop. Pyrilla purpusilla does not damage the stem of sugarcane. Instead, what they do is they suck out the juice from the leaves. So near the midrib at the under surface of the leaf they would lodge their piercing and sucking mouth parts and they would suck out the juice from the leaves. What is the result of that? The food that is produced by the leaves and is supposed to be transferred through the midrib to the stem is sucked out by Pyrilla purpusilla nymphs as well as adults. Okay. As a result, the leaves become dry and brown or yellowish. Not only that, the nymphs as well as the adults, they secrete some sugary secretion from their posterior end. It happens in many hemipteran insects. Now, this sugary secretion, which is also known as the honeydew, that gets spread on the leaves. As a result, fungus starts to grow on the leaves. So black sooty mold development happens on the leaves. As a result, the leaves turn black. Now leaves not only turn black because of this fungus, they also stop getting sunlight because this mold makes uh, an opaque uh, covering on the leaves. So the sunlight cannot pass through them and the leaves do not get sunlight, they cannot carry out photosynthesis, food production of the plant is hampered, as a result the sugarcane growth is hampered. Habits of Pyrilla purpusilla. It is a generalized feeder. When sugarcane is not available, they can survive on any other plant belonging to Poesi family. So even grass can become their hosts. It breeds throughout the year, which makes a very difficult, uh, which makes it very difficult to control, because they are found all through the year. You cannot just shift your uh, crop production time or your cultivation time and get rid of it. It is always there. If not on sugarcane, then on rice or wheat or any other gramine family plant. It can jump off very fast or fly off whenever disturbed. Let's talk about how we can control Pyrilla purpusilla. The first method is of course chemical control. For chemical control, either we can use organophosphate pesticides or we can use organochlorine pesticides. Okay, so parathion, malathion, thiodon or phenytrothion can be used by spraying 0.05% or 10% of aldrin or dialdrin can also be used. Cultural control, sugarcane, stubbles and wild grasses can be removed and burnt after harvesting. So, 
when sugarcane crops are harvested the stubbles are left in the field right so they can be collected and removed from the field so that the uh, pyrilla purpusilla nymphs are not uh, are, are not still there and if they are burnt then the adult and the nymph phyllilla purpusilla which remains with the stubbles can be destroyed and wild grasses which are the alternate hosts for sugarcane uh, for uh, pyrilla purpusilla when sugarcane is not available they should be also removed from the field let's talk about biological control conservation of the following natural enemies helps in containing the pest so naturally there are quite a few enemies of pyrilla purpusilla there are some egg parasitoids nymphal parasitoids egg predators or nymphal or adult predators so these uh, insects if they are around then pyrilla purpusilla can be kept under check okay so let's recap the whole uh, lecture for systematic position pyrilla purpusilla belongs to order hemiptera suborder homoptera family fulguridae or lophopedi identification it can be identified by its straw colored body with black minute dots and a very prominent rostrum at the end of the rostrum it would have the piercing and sucking mouth parts habits it's a generalized feeder it breeds throughout the year and it can hop very easily or fly off very easily okay life cycle it will uh, include the egg nymph and adult life stages the ways it can damage the crop the leaves become dry and black with sooty fungus on them so the leaves cannot produce food and the plant growth hampers and it cannot produce enough sugar in the stem for control of pyrilla purpusilla various chemical and biological control methods are available which can be used to keep this pest under check hope you like this video please come back for the second part of this series where i am going to talk about scirpophaga nivella